In this video, we're going to take a look at the Evaluate Expression tool that comes with the debugger within IntelliJ. So this tool will allow us to investigate the different objects and variables that are created whenever our debugger stops. And then secondly, we're going to take a look at some of the watches that we can create with our debugger as well. So the watches will allow us to monitor the different variables and objects that are created and how they're updated as the application runs within the debug mode. So if we quickly take a look at the class we'll be testing, we have this player class, which has a name, an age, and a team for each player. And then what we do is we create a list of all the different players and the team and the age that they have. And then we collect those players by their team. So this is where we have this team player map, which is each of the teams as, as the key, and then a list of players as the values. And then we have this team average age map, which represents each team as the key, and then the average age of all the players within that team as the integer. And then we have this method here, which will create the report, but we won't really be looking at that in this video. Okay, so I'm going to begin by adding a breakpoint on line 10. So we will populate both of these maps, and then we can take a look into those maps. So we've run the debugger, and we can see that, see that the team player map and the team average age map have both been populated with 13 each. And we can look into both of these down here in the debug mode. Now the problem we have here is that you know there's quite a f there's quite a lot of different keys to this team player map, and in a real life circumstance you might have you know hundreds or even thousands of keys within your map. So finding an individual kind of value within this map can be quite difficult. So let's say we wanted to understand all the different players that belong to a city. So one way that you could do this is by creating a separate list of players and then just calling the get function for the team player map using the key of a city. So I'm just going to write this on top. And now if I rerun the debugger, we can see that we have a new variable called a city players, and this will contain all the players within the team a city. But then let's say we wanted to find out all the different teams that are available within the team player map or any other kind of operation that we might want to compute. It's not very efficient to keep creating different variables and different kinds of objects just so we can look into this. So this is where the evaluate expression can be really useful here. And the evaluate expression tool will allow us to perform operations upon the objects that are available to us within the debugger. So the evaluate expression first can be accessed by clicking this small calculator button and we can just close it. And if you were to select one of these variables on the right hand side and select the calculator, it would then already provide us with the access to this variable. So for example, let's say I wanted to find out all the different teams within the team player map. So I could do team player map dot, then I could just get the key set. And then I can hit evaluate and this will provide us all the different keys within the team player map. Similarly, there are many other types of operations I might like to perform. So I might like to get all the players from a city. Then that would return all the different players that I require. And also I might like to check that certain keys are available. So let's say we have AI city and that would return true. Or let's say I wanted to find if AI United was a team within this map and that would return false. So the evaluate expression tool is really powerful within IntelliJ. And as you might imagine, there's a lot of insight that can be obtained through the evaluate expression tool, especially as we might want to use the stream API to further evaluate and stream and filter across all the different values that we have. So I'm going to close this and now we're going to take a look at what the IntelliJ watches can do to help us understand how our application progresses, uh, sort of frame by frame. And we're really going to focus on this calculate average team age method, which will calculate the average age of each player within the team and return a map of each team and that average age. So we're going to look at how this process works step by step, and we're going to rerun the debugger. So we've come through to the calculate average team age method. And within this method, a map of string to integer is being created. And essentially each string will be the team name and the integer will be the average age. 
The average age is calculated by iterating over each player within each team and accumulating this total age integer. And then the average age is finally computed by taking the total age and the team players dot size. And what's quite nice is that as we iterate over uh, this method, within the debugger, the new variables will also be added for us to see. So if I just step over, we can now see that the team players is just a size of one and it has John who's 27, and that the team we're looking at is AC United. So if I step over again, we have the total age of zero, which is defined down below. And then as we iterate through each player within this team, there's only one player, this total age will be updated. And we can now see the total age has been updated to 27. We don't have any more players, so now we will calculate the average age, which is 27 divided by the team players dot size. And I think that is just one. So we have here team players size equals one. So now within the team to average age map, we will put in AC United with that average age. So that seems fairly simple enough. Um, however, we'll then be doing this for multiple teams. And what would be nice is if we could keep an eye on, say, a few other operations down below every time that we're iterating over the team. And that way we can see how the calculations are being performed. And this is where watches come in to be quite useful. And a watch essentially allows us to inspect upon a variable or an operation upon a variable uh, as we run our application frame by frame. So what do I mean by that? So we can see that the average age uses this team players dot size. And let's say we want to keep an eye on that exact size. So I can highlight over it and then I can go add to watches. And we can see that team players dot size cannot find local variable. And that's because we're currently on line 47 and that size hasn't actually been instantiated. So if I go over it, we can now see team players dot size is one. And that's because C United only has one player. So I'm just going to put another breakpoint in here and skip over C United. And if I step over here, we now have B United and they have a total number of players as two. So one of the key advantages to the watches is that we can perform operations upon our different objects and keep an eye on how they're being updated. So let's say we want to see what the team to average age map maybe the sizes, or maybe we want to understand what the first entry is. So what I could do is select this plus icon, which is new watch, and I can type in team to average age map dot get. And let's say I want to pass in the key of, of B United. So if that key hasn't been added yet, it should be kind of empty. Otherwise, once it is added, we'll be able to see all the details that are being added which is that average age for this map. So it's currently null. Now if I run through to the end of this loop, and now we can see that the B United is going to be added. And now we can see that team to average age map dot get B United has an integer of 28. So if we're looking for specific items or operations within our objects, we can specify a watch specifically for that item uh, and that will allow us to kind of understand how an object or a property of an object is being updated frame by frame within the debugger.